All right, looking at the next movement in the eight pieces of brocade and introducing the uh, new format, getting away from the PowerPoint, putting in some illustration and animation. So, hope you enjoy. So, this move is relatively straightforward, involves the arms being outstretched and palms turned facing forward, fingers extended, while the neck uh, turns left and right, alternately looking, trying to look all the way behind you to the left and then to the right and then repeated for a number of repetitions. Now the muscles involved in this movement are the pectoralis major which has fibers that go from the clavicle and also from the sternum and go insert into the humerus. Then we have the anterior deltoid which is also stretched and the sternocleidomastoid muscle which is the muscle on the side of your neck and it connects to the sternum clavicle and the mastoid bone which is the bone just behind your ear and we also have involvement of the trapezius and uh, just for show here as some of the fibers from the pectoralis major uh, crisscross and insert into the external oblique uh, aponeurosis. Looking at the front of the body we see how the sternocleidomastoid muscle and the trapezius muscle act as an agonist antagonist pair working in concert with each other to turn the head left and right. The sternocleidomastoid muscle works contralaterally so when turning the head to the right, it is the left sternocleidomastoid muscle that activates. And then the left trapezius muscle is relaxed. This is indicated by the yellow and blue arrows. The yellow arrow indicates active or shortening muscles. And the direction of the arrow indicates the direction of the shortening. And the blue arrow indicates relaxed or stretching muscles and the arrow direction indicates the direction of the stretch. Now looking at the back of the body we see the lats are activated, the posterior deltoid is activated, the infraspinatus is activated as that's involved in external or lateral rotation of the shoulder and then we have the upper fibers of the trapezius when the neck turns left or right and then we have the uh, teres minor which is also involved in external rotation of the shoulder and we see here in this more detailed image of the uh, deeper layers the rhomboids pull the scapula inward along with the levator scapula and we see the posterior deltoid here uh, pulling the arm backwards and then we can also look at the trapezius here, the fibers of the trapezius going from the scapula up to the back of the head or the occipital bone. So when the trapezius contracts, there's a, there's a pull in the scapula, but it is held in place by the rhomboids and the contractions of the posterior deltoid and other muscles which hold it in place. And then the neck is rotating due to the contraction of the trapezius in concert with the uh, sternocleidomastoid muscle. So now looking at the back when we see the head turning to the left and right we see activation of the trapezius of the same side or the ipsilateral side to turn the head in that direction so when it's turning left the left upper trapezius fibers are activating and shortening or contracting and when you turn right the right fibers of the trapezius muscle are contracting or uh, firing activating. In contrast, the ipsilateral sternocleidomastoid muscle is relaxed. So the trapezius muscles work ipsilaterally, so they turn the head to the same side while the sternocleidomastoid muscle works contralaterally whereas it turns the head to the opposite side. Now let's look at some of the fascial connections between muscles involved in this movement. 
Uh, we mentioned before the serrato rhomboid complex, which is the connections between the rhomboids and the serratus muscles, and also the pectoralis minor. And we see in this posture, the arms are pulled back, the chest is stretched, and the rhomboids would be active. So there would be tension along the rhomboids here, contracting or shortening, thus pulling the fascia and connective tissue along the front of the body uh, including around the serratus anterior muscles and pectoralis minor muscles pulling apart the chest. At the superficial layer at the front of the body we see fascial connections between the sternocleidomastoid muscle and the pectoral fascia. So the fascia of the sternocleidomastoid muscle crisscrosses and connects into the contralateral pectoral fascia and this possibly could affect the tension in the sternocleidomastoid muscle and the pectoral fascia so that having the pectoral fascia stretched increases the stretch along the sternocleidomastoid muscle I've indicated here uh, some contributing tension on the pectoral fascia indicated by this orange arrow as the sternocleidomastoid muscle tries to contract at both its insertion and origin points. Also contributing to tension on the pectoral fascia are fascial connections from the anterior deltoid into the pectoral fascia and then also we have the deltoid affecting tension in what's known as the brachial fascia or the connective tissue sleeve that's around the upper part of the arm. The pectoral fascia and some of the muscle fibers of the pectoralis major uh, connect contralaterally into the external oblique uh, aponeurosis also known as the rectus sheath or would be the superficial layer of the rectus sheath. And I'd like to make note here of the uh, important uh, fascial aponeurosis known as the thoracolumbar fascia from which the uh, external obliques around the back side of the body or the posterior side of the body uh, connect into and as well as the gluteus maximus muscles and these go from the thoracolumbar fascia and then many uh, roughly 70 percent or so of the gluteus maximus muscle fibers insert into the IT band which is a reinforcement of what's known as the fascia lata or the connective tissue sleeve around the upper leg. Quick warning, um, some of the images coming up next are from the book The Atlas of the Human Fascial System and these are photographs of human cadaver dissections. So this image here shows the connections of the sternocleidomastoid muscle into the clavicle and the pectoralis major muscle and we can also see towards the back the trapezius muscle. Uh, here's another image of the s s roughly the same thing slightly different angle of the sternocleidomastoid muscle and we see here the uh, fascia connections of the deltoid muscle into the pectoralis major muscle and this last one shows the pectoralis major fascial connections into the rectus sheath. So the the fascia in these images is that kind of yellow uh, saran wrap looking like material that overlays over top of the muscles so wherever you see this kind of yellowish film that is the fascia just a reminder, I am not a professional, medical, or otherwise. I have no credentials or certified by any regulatory body. I'm just interested in martial arts and curious about physiology and how everything works. That said, I am not making everything up. I do use references, physiology, textbooks, and other sources to substantiate these uh, ideas and videos. So here they are. These are the ones I mostly use. Check them out. If you like this video, make sure to hit the like button. If you're on Instagram, hit the follow button. And if you're on YouTube, subscribe to my YouTube channel and check out some of the other videos.